Hey y'all, welcome back to Ukulele Wine Time. My name is Catherine. Today we're gonna learn how to play Take Me Home Country Roads by John Denver in the key of C. Let's do it. Ukulele Wine Time. Here's where we're going. Country roads, take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home, country roads. We need three important pieces of information before we start learning this song, and that is the time signature, the key signature and the form of the song. So time signature, we're in 4-4 or common time, means our heartbeat of the song and how we're counting. We're counting four beats per measure. Key signature, we're learning the song in the key of C today, but it is important to note that the original John Denver recording is in the key of A. If you're interested in learning more about key signatures or how to change the key of a song, it has to do with Roman numerals, you can check out this video for more information. And then the form of the song, we have a very short intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, double chorus, and then a nice outro at the end. You just need six chords to play this song, C, A minor, F, G, B flat, and G7. And the B flat and G7 only happen on the bridge. If you need an overview how to play these chords, check out the timestamps below. I go through them at the end of this video. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through each section of the song. We're gonna do some counting. We're gonna add the lyrics and see where those line up with the chords. We're gonna talk strumming. We'll talk starting pitch. So if you're singing it, you'll know exactly what to do and where to start. We'll take a mini wine break or a something else break. And then we'll do a full song run through at the end. Of course, you can check out the timestamps below to jump around as needed. Let's dive in with the verse. So to play the verse, our first chord progression is C, A minor, G, F. If you have your chart printed out, that's available over on my Patreon page. Um, it's got the slash notation so you can see the counting of the chords and where those line up. Really helpful if you're a visual person, so check that out, I've linked that below. Okay, so our time signature is four, and for the most part, we're holding each chord in this song for four beats. There's one tricky little part in the verse though, however, in the first line of the verse. So we've got four beats of C, so C, two, three, four. A minor for four beats, G for four beats, and then we've got a little six beat thing happening here. So we've got two beats of F, F two, and then C two, three, four. I'm gonna play that for you so you can hear what that sounds like. So here we go. I'm gonna count and play the verse. One, two, three, four. C two, three, four. A minor, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. F, two, C, two, three. Stay on C, two, three, four. A minor, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. Two beats each. F, two, C, two. Okay, so that's the verse, that's the same for both verses. And for now, I'm just doing a simple downstroke with my thumb on beat one. I'm holding those out for whole notes or for four beats. Just those two tricky spots, I've got two beats of F, two beats of C at the very end, and then that tricky section in the first line where we actually change time signatures just for a moment. Let's add lyrics now. Okay, so if you've got the printout here, I like to bold the places where the lyrics line up exactly with the chord. So when you're strumming, that helps keep you on track if you're strumming and singing. Um, our first word anchor doesn't happen really though until Shenandoah and then river. Um, and then let's see, we've got, we play our C chord first, almost heaven, and then the lyrics come in and then we play our next chord, A minor. West Virginia, G, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. So the first three little um, chords, you play the chord, then the lyrics happen. Chord, lyrics, chord, lyrics. But then we line back up on Shenandoah and then river. The next line, we play our C chord, C, life is old there. Here we line up, older than the trees. 
so older lines up with A minor, G lines up with younger, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Okay, growing lines up with your F chord, breeze, growing like a breeze. Breeze is like a little tiny bit before that C chord. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. C, almost heaven. A minor, West Virginia. G, Blue Ridge Mountains. Shenandoah River. Three, four, stay there. Life is old there. Older than the trees. Younger than the mountains. Growing like a breeze. Country rose. And then we're in the chorus. Nice work. I just want to pause a moment and say counting is so important. It's going to build the foundation for more complex strumming patterns later on. So I do recommend starting basic like this getting a really good handle on the counting, then you can add lyrics, then you can add more advanced strumming. Let's move on to the chorus. So our chord progression for the chorus, we have C, G, A minor, F. Then we have C, G, F, C. Four beats per chord, nice and straightforward. We're gonna count it first. Here we go. One, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. A minor, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. F, two, three, back to C, two, three, four. Great. Let's add lyrics now. The only true word anchor we have or place where the lyric lines up exactly with the downbeat of the chord is that first uh, Rhodes. It lines up with your C chord. Country roads. All right, let's try it. One, two, three. Country roads. Take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home, country roads. All right, and there you have the chorus. Let's move on to the bridge. So the bridge chord movement is slightly different. We have more um, two beats per chord. So our, we've got A minor, G, C, F, C, G, and then this is where we're throwing in our B flat and our G7. The last line, A minor, B flat, F, C, G to G7. So let's count it. So we've got, yeah, two beats per chord interspersed with four beats per chord. So here we go. Counting first, then we'll add lyrics. One, two, three, four. A minor, G two, C two, three, F two, C two, G two, three, four, A minor two, B flat two, F two, C two, G two, three, four, G seven two, three, take me home. All right, now we're back into the chorus. Let's add lyrics now. We've got a couple of word anchors here. Um, I hear her voice in the morning hours. We don't have one until radio lines up with our F chord. The radio reminds me of my home. So we've got home lines up with our G chord, far away. A minor lines up with driving. Driving down the road, I get a feeling, F with feeling that I should have, C with should have, been home yesterday. That's our G with yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Okay, let's try it with lyrics. One, two, three, four. I hear her voice in the morning as she calls me. The radio reminds me of my home far away. Driving down the road, I get a feeling that I should have been home yesterday. 
yesterday, yesterday. Now we're at the chorus. Nice work. We've got two more sections to go. The intro, which is very easy, and the outro, also pretty easy. For the intro, we're just playing two bars or two four beat counts of C. So literally just C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, then verse, almost heaven. Easiest intro ever. All right, let's move on to the outro. Um, outro is more like a tag where we're repeating the last two words of, or the last um, little phrase of the chorus. So we've got, um, take me home down country rows. We've just got a G chord to a C chord. And that's four beats of G, four beats of C. And then you do it again. Let's count it, then we'll play it. One, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, C, two, three. Let's sing it. Take me home, down country roads. Take me home, down country roads. All right, we've covered all of the sections of the song. Let's talk strumming pattern options next. So when you're learning a new song, I highly recommend just doing a simple downstroke before you try out any other strumming patterns. So get the chords under your fingers, feeling good, great. Just a simple downstroke per chord, perfect. If you're ready to add some more rhythm after that, our option two strumming pattern would be to just add more downstrokes and that would be on every beat of the measure, or all four beats. That's our heartbeat of the song, we're in 4-4 time signature, so that would sound like this. C, two, three, four, this is the verse. West Virginia, G, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River, three, four, stay on C. And you can do that the whole song where you can mix and match the just simple downstroke, holding whole notes just on beat one with all four downbeats. Option three, if you're ready to level up your strumming pattern, you can go with a down, down, up, down, up. Once again, that sounds like this. Down, down, up, down, up. This is gonna happen twice per measure. So the down, down, up, down, up, takes up two beats. So we've got four beats per measure, right? So then that would happen twice for every four counts or twice per measure. Let me give you a little sample of what that would sound like. One, two, three, four. first line of the verse, I'll remind you, only happens for two beats. So you do one strumming pattern, one down, down, up, down, up on F, and then you're back to C. If you're trying out the strumming pattern, I highly recommend practicing it on its own without lyrics, without singing first. Even with a metronome would be super awesome. Um, and then you can go about adding the lyrics after that once you've got a solid feel for the strumming pattern. If you need more help with your strumming, I have a whole uh, six part series on strumming, building a foundation with rhythm, and then moving up to these more complex strumming patterns like the island strum. Um, and it all revolves around, you know, building that strong foundation of quarter notes, half notes, whole notes, and then adding in the eighth note up strokes. And you'll see, if you've noticed, if you watch my hand during the strumming pattern, I've got, my hand, my wrist is always moving. So I've got down, down, up, down. So even when I'm not brushing the strings, I'm keeping the beat here. Those are the eighth notes. Down, down, up, down. Okay, so if you wanna know more about that, check out my strumming video series. 
Let's talk starting pitch if you're singing the song. So again, we're in the key of C. The starting pitch for the verse is a G. So you can play your open G string to find it. If you have a high G string, la, you're gonna have to go down an octave. That sounds like somewhere over the rainbow. That interval is an octave. If you have a low G string, you're all set. Almost. So that's our first vocal starting pitch for the verse. Almost heaven. The chorus of starting pitch starts on a C. You can play your open C string to find it. Country roads, and then roads is an E, so you can play your open C string to your open E string. Country roads, I hear. The bridge starting pitch is also a C. I hear, I hear her voice. You can find that again playing your open C string. All right, y'all, we're gonna take a mini wine break, except I'm not drinking wine today. I'm actually doing um, dry January, which has been lovely. Yeah, funny how I'm in this stage of my life. I've got two little kids. I'm working really hard on my career. And I don't know, drinking just hasn't really been fitting in lately. So ukulele one time, I still enjoy a nice glass of wine now and then, but yeah. So today I'm drinking um, these booze-free cocktails. It's from Curious Elixirs. This is uh, Curious number one. It's a pomegranate Negroni style drink. Super yummy. I've been really digging these. We've been drinking them at my in-person Sip and Strum events, so. Yeah, cheers, thanks, Curious. And I wanna say cheers to you for being here. You're taking time out of your day to get creative, play some music, spend some time on you, your creative self. So I love that, good for you, more of that. Cheers. Okay, one of my favorite things to do is to read the Wikipedia page of the songs that I'm teaching. Um, so this one has a really fun story about the origins of this song that I'd never heard of. So um, actually there were two other songwriters on Take Me Home Country Road, so of course we know John Denver, um, but there was a couple, um, Bill Danoff and Taffy Nivert, Nivert, um, married couple, songwriters working on the song. They were like, they wrote the verse. He's actually from Massachusetts, but he's like, that's not poetic. Took a trip down to through West Virginia and he was like, wow, I've you know, never been to a place like this before. Really taken by the scenery and the mountains, Shenandoah River. Um, so they started writing this song with his wife, took it back to New York City. They were actually going to sell it to Johnny Cash. John Denver, who was friends with them, heard it. He was like, no, I must have this song. I love it. Um, he wanted to play it at a big show he had coming up. So actually the three of them stayed up all night till like 6 a.m. in the morning, finished the song. So he helped with the bridge. Um, and I'm sure some other parts of the song too. And they finished the song. Oh, and actually... The working title was Rhododendron. Can you believe that? The state flower, I guess, state flower of West Virginia. Thank goodness they changed the, the title. Um, yeah, so then John Denver plays this at his show. It's the premiere of the song. He calls the songwriting couple up onto the stage with him um, to kind of shout them out. They read the lyrics out loud. I think that's how the story goes. Um, John Denver plays the song, gets a standing ovation, and the rest is kind of history. Just you know, really huge song for him. Um, and it became one of the anthems for West Virginia. So there you have it. A little fun fact about um, the origins of Take Me Home Country Roads. All right, y'all, we're gonna put it all together. This is our full song playthrough. We're gonna play our two bars of C at the top for our intro. We will do verse one, chorus, verse two, chorus, bridge, double chorus, and then our outro. And I'm going to do the down, down, up, down, up strumming pattern, I think, the mo most of the way through. However, if you're not there yet, that's all good. You can just play your down strokes wherever you are. That's totally fine. Here we go. One, two, three.
Nice job. Couple things. Bridge strumming. You might notice I went to a simpler strumming pattern there. You could, it's a nice idea to change it up so you're not doing the whole the same strumming pattern the whole song. Um, so I just went to a simpler, either just the down strokes, the on the quarter note, or just one down stroke on beat one. Really nice, kind of change it up. Um, and then at the end in the outro. I didn't do the whole strumming pattern. Sometimes I just did the down, down, up, down, up. Take me home, down country. So it's down, down, up, down, up, down. Down, down, up, down, up, down. Take me home, down. So I just modified the strumming pattern ever so slightly. All right, thanks so much for playing that with me. Um, I hope you had fun learning Take Me Home Country Roads by John Denver and by Bill Danoff and Taffy Nivert. Nivert, sorry Taffy. Once again, if you want the full chart with this with the chord diagrams and the lyrics and the slash notation for counting, you can check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash ukulele wine time. And I also have this in another key. So if the key of C isn't fitting well with your voice, um, I feel like the key of C is better for a female vocal range, for a higher vocal range. Um, I also have it in the key of G. So if you wanna check that out, if you are a male singer or have a lower voice, key of G might be a better fit for you. So check that out, I've also got that linked below. All right, I'll see you guys very soon. Once again, my name is Catherine. Thanks for being here. Cheers. Wait, cheers. Ukulele wine time. Here is that chord overview. So if you need a little refresher on how to play these chords, I'm gonna take you through them. So first we need a C chord. So ukulele fingers, one, two, three, four. Thumb doesn't get a number. So I need my third finger on the third fret, one, two, three, of my A string. That is a C major chord. Okay. Next up we have A minor. So I need my second finger or my middle finger on the second fret, one, two, of my G string or my top string. It's a one finger chord, that's an A minor. There it is there. Okay, and you can actually stay there. We're gonna add one more finger to make it an F chord. So with my first finger, first fret, I'm gonna skip a string. I need my E string, that's an F chord, okay? Next up we have a G chord, this is a three finger chord. First, you're gonna use your P sign fingers on the second fret of your C and your A string. Okay, so land those first, and then your ring finger is gonna come down on the third fret of your E string makes a little triangle there on the fretboard, so that's a G chord. And if this chord is tricky for you, I recommend landing those two peace sign fingers first, and then your ring finger can follow. It's kind of naturally gonna wanna follow, fall into place there. It's 
our G chord. Let's go to G7 next. So actually we want this same position as our peace sign fingers here, but we're gonna use different fingers. We, we're gonna turn the whole triangle up, so instead of the point being down here, the point's gonna be at the top. We gotta do a little shuffle here. Okay, so now my middle two fingers are gonna take the place there, okay? And then my first finger is gonna go to the first fret of my E string to make a G7 chord. If that's too tricky for you, if that's too much for you right now, you can also just, um, on that G7, it only happens one time at the end of the bridge, you could just play a G2, keep it simple. Last up we have B flat. So this is a half, kind of a half bar chord. Um, and if you've played an E minor shape on the ukulele, this is kind of the same idea. We go diagonal on the fretboard. So I'm using these three fingers, starting on the third fret with my uh, ring finger. Sorry, I have chickens. There was a little scuffle outside. <laughs> okay, so I've got my third finger on the third fret of my G string, and then I'm following in place, second finger, second fret of my C string, and then now our first finger has a little more heavy lifting to do here. So I'm actually gonna make a half bar, I'm gonna take these away so you can see, half bar, and you're gonna pre press down two fingers at the same time. Normally when you're doing chords, you wanna be up on your tippy, on your fingertips. Now we're gonna just mush it down, <laughs> we're just gonna mash those strings down. So these two fingers are on their tips, this one, I'm gonna to try to push down. Okay, that's our B flat chord. So I'm holding down two strings with one finger there. That's our B flat chord. Definitely a more challenging chord for beginners, but hey, the more you do it, the easier it's gonna get. Hope this helps and I will see you very soon. Cheers. Ukulele wine time.